Hey guys, PJ here and welcome to another devlog video. In this video, I'll be showing off the latest additions I made to the game, namely the building system and the crafting system. I also polished up the UI by redesigning most elements and I'll briefly show you some of the tips and tricks in Photoshop that you can use yourself to create not only UI elements, but also things like logos and stuff. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss any future updates. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. So the first thing I wanted to work on for this devlog was the crafting system. But since this is a more or less purely UI based system, I felt this was the perfect opportunity to overhaul some of the existing interface elements and while I was at it, rework the inventory UI a bit so that it's ready to ship with the demo. The first thing I did was spend some time experimenting with potential styles. I did a lot of mockups in Photoshop and tried out a bunch of different things, some good and some really bad. <laughs> If you want to know the specific techniques I used in Photoshop to create these, keep watching, I'll get back to that later. So one thing I disliked about my old UI style was that it was a bit too dark and everything had sharp corners. I initially thought sharp corners would fit the game's low poly style, but it kind of just ended up looking bland and lazy. So for the new UI, I wanted to try incorporating more rounded corners into everything, just to make it a little nicer to look at, not too much. Initially, I only used different shades of blue, but that made it feel a little bit too sci-fi, so I ended up using this light gold color as a secondary color, which improved that a lot. I also separated out the equipment into its own separate window to make the interface a little bit more modular. Bear in mind the icons here are still placeholder. At the end of the day, I just want a simple clean looking UI without too much fluff, but at the same time it can be too basic or it'll look bland, so it's definitely a bit of a balancing act. As for how I went about creating these elements in Photoshop, pretty much everything is made purely with layer styles. If you don't know what layer styles are, they're a very powerful feature that people who are new to Photoshop often tend to ignore completely for some reason. I've seen a couple of my friends try to make things like drop shadows and various glows by hand, literally by painting them with the brush tool. I'm actually guilty of doing this myself back when I started using Photoshop, which is why I definitely wanted to mention it. This is not a tutorial video, so I'm not going to go very deep into this, but I'll show you briefly how to use it. You can access layer styles by double clicking a layer in Photoshop or by right clicking and selecting blending options at the very top. Here you can toggle a whole bunch of effects that you can customize, such as inner and outer glows, gradient overlays, bevel and emboss, etc. And while this might look like a gimmicky feature at first glance, the amount of things you can create with this are really endless. From metallic looking adornments to glass to sleek looking modern buttons, you name it. All you need is a layer or shape with some opaque pixels in it and you can start playing around with it. As you can see, a bunch of strokes, a gradient overlay already go a long way into creating interesting looking graphics. Another trick is that you can use a black or dark color outer glow set to multiply to sort of simulate some ambient occlusion around an object and give it a lot more sense of depth. One tip I would give though is that subtlety is key. Don't overdo the effects unless you want your stuff to look like word art. Be especially wary of bevel and emboss. It has its uses but most of the time it actually makes things look worse rather than better so don't overuse it. Now back to the crafting system. The way it works is you have a list of basic crafting recipes that you can craft anywhere in the world. When you select an item you can see its material requirements below. You can craft a single unit of that item or you can automatically craft as many as you have the materials for. If you're close to a crafting station such as a workbench, a furnace or a cooking pot or something the recipe list will be populated with extra items that you can craft. For example, metal bars can be made from ore when standing next to a furnace. Another aspect is that most crafting stations will have multiple levels of upgrades. For example, you can upgrade a campfire into a cooking pot to unlock new cooking recipes. You can turn a regular furnace into a blast furnace to smelt multiple bars at a time, or a novice workbench into an expert workbench, unlocking a whole bunch of new tools. I haven't implemented the upgrading system yet, but the way it will work is each crafting station requires a specific set of items inserted into it. For example, upgrading a campfire into a cooking pot might only require a couple of iron bars, while upgrading a workbench might require a more rare set of items, some of which can, for example, be dropped from bosses. This way we link the crafting system into the progression, and we can gain certain recipes behind certain boss skills and so on. The next thing I worked on was the building system. Now, there are a couple of approaches when it comes to building in survival-like games, and they all sort of have their pros and cons. The first approach I considered was a kind of Minecraft-like block grid system where you can only place unit-sized pieces in a grid arrangement. The biggest pro of this approach is that it's quite intuitive to use while still allowing a good degree of customizability. The main downside I saw with this approach was I worried whether it was going to fit in the game's art style if all the player-made structures are 
are made out of blocks essentially. A variation on this approach is the Fortnite system. This one actually works in mostly the same way, but the grid unit size is a lot bigger and sort of has more high level pieces like a floor, a staircase and so on. Again, the biggest advantage here is the intuitiveness. I mean, the fact that players literally build a whole hotel in Fortnite in like three seconds is testament to how intuitive it actually is. A big con though is the lack of customizability. There isn't a whole lot of room for unique structures within this system, but all in all, I would say it's a good system for a fast paced competitive PvP game, but not so much for a more adventurous type of game where people like to take their time to decorate their bases more. So that brings me to the last system and ultimately the one I ended up going for, which is the Valheim slash Rust approach. Here you basically have a catalog of structures that you can place. The placement is completely freeform and you can snap different pieces together to create more complex builds. The big advantage of this one is definitely the freedom and customizability. You can even hold down a key to disable snapping so you're absolutely free to play stuff where you want and how you want. The biggest disadvantage is that this is probably the least intuitive system to use. It can sometimes be frustrating when things don't snap the way you want and this can only really be fixed to a certain degree or by adding more controls which makes it even harder to use. That is just a compromise I had to make. For the snapping implementation I wanted it to be mostly automatic so I didn't have to set up a bunch of stuff for each different building piece. The way I have it set up currently is that each piece has a snap bounding box which for most pieces is just its regular collision shape and along the edges I generate snapping points spaced one in-game unit apart. Snapping points that are too close together I collapse and average out into a single one. This way a wall piece for example does not have a bunch of fiddly snapping points on all of its corners but kind of acts as a plane with snapping points being in the center of the wall piece. When placing structures I do a ray cast from the camera's point of view into the scene and if we hit an existing structure we compute the snapping points for it as well as the snapping points of the structure we're trying to place. Then we figure out the pair of points that are closest to each other and their relative position and apply that to the structure placement position. This approach is definitely not perfect and it's going to require some further tweaking but it's good enough to build some basic bases for now. And while this is the system that I'm going to be shipping with the demo, for the future I'm really curious to hear what you guys opinion is. What kind of building systems do you prefer and why? Make sure to let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like. It helps the video get picked up by the YouTube algorithm. As always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.